Hi there, I'm Bill Hurt with part three of three of the Christmas tree making tutorial. I'm going to be doing this in Daz Studio 2.3, but it'll work in earlier versions as well. You can also do this in Poser. The user interface is a bit different, but essentially all the setup and rendering is the same. Okay, whether you're using Poser or Daz Studio, you'll need to change your render settings to software render. I'm going to be using the 3D light render and in Poser you'll need to use the Firefly render in order for this to work properly. I suggest that you keep your pixel samples and shadow samples down low, maybe two or so, until you get everything in the scene dialed in the way you want it, and then increase those for the final render. Hit accept. First thing to do from a blank scene is import the Christmas tree that we made earlier in Wings 3D. That's tree.obj and open. For this, I'm going to use the Cinema 4D settings on the import. The only reason, essentially, is because it will scale it to be about the size of a Christmas tree. Uh, about 10 or 11 feet, maybe a hair tall for a standard Christmas tree, but it's in the ballpark. Yours may be a little bit taller or shorter, depending on how you made the model in Wings 3D. Go ahead and select all options on, with the exception of swap Y and Z orientation and you can turn off read material library because we don't need it in this case and okay so there's the christmas tree model it's nothing spectacular uh, just a regular gray sort of christmas tree shape but when we go over here to the surfaces tab which is the material room in uh, poser uh, we can go ahead and change some of these material settings and make it look much better I'm going to select the tree material, go to basic here, change the shadow ambient to black. Click OK. The highlight specular should be white. And the color diffuse, I'm going to browse to that texture that we made earlier called trunk and open it. And now we have the trunk texture on the trunk. And doesn't look like much now, but these will get better. We go to the branch. And for that, the shadow ambient, I'm going to make a very dark green, almost black. The reason why I'm doing this is because it simulates the translucency of pine needles. You can do translucency in the advanced tabs. You can do subsurface scattering and everything here in Daz Studio, but uh, it's going to add a ton to the render time. This is a way to kind of fake it uh, good enough and keep the render time a little bit lower. The highlight specular should be white. And the color diffuse. For that, we want to browse to our tree texture and hit open. Looking a little bit better. Still nothing all that great, though. Now go down here to where it says opacity, right below it, where it says none. Click on that and load up. Go to browse and load up the tree transparency map and open. Now you see that we've got the individual branches showing. The way this works is, from our transparency map, is anywhere that's black becomes invisible, anywhere that's white will show. All right. Now let's do a quick render. You can see that there's nothing really all that spectacular about it, but it is starting to look like a tree. Okay, now what's gonna add a lot of a lot of the detail here is when we go to displacement, which is in the advanced tab. With the branch still selected, go to advanced tab, go down about halfway and look for displacement. Under displacement here, we're going to change from none on our strength to our displacement map. The way displacement maps work is anywhere that's white, it will extrude the geometry upwards. Anywhere that's black, it will extrude it downwards. And anywhere in gray, it'll stay about the same. This will add tons and tons of detail to our model. The beauty of displacement is, is that while you're setting up your scene, the computer only has to calculate a very limited number of polygons. In this case, I think we have uh, 200 or 500 or so. Uh, and then it doesn't have to do the extra calculations for the detail until render time. I want to change the strength on displacement up to around 100. You can leave the minimum displacement where it is and change the maximum. Bring that up quite a bit, somewhere in the neighborhood of 6. 
doesn't need to be specific, just somewhere in that neighborhood. Now when we render, you'll notice that all the areas that were white on our displacement map have extruded up and formed into pine needles. Because the branches were a dark gray shade in our displacement map, those have only extruded up a little bit, just enough to give them a little bit of shape to them. Now that looks okay, but it's still a little bit sparse. So what I'm going to do actually is load up a second copy of our tree object under the same settings. To eliminate any kind of confusion, I'm going to rename this tree two and hit enter. Then I'll go to the parameter settings and just scale it a little bit randomly. I'll move it up a little bit and uh, I think I will scale it Y a, a tiny bit just so it gives a little bit of variation and I will Y rotate it about 100 degrees or so. Alright, in our material settings I'm just going to copy the settings from the previous tree and apply them to the second one. Copy and paste. And now when we render you'll see that you have a lot more detailed, a lot more full Christmas tree. Alright, now that's looking fairly good but it still doesn't quite look realistic. One thing that adds a lot of realism in CG renders is the use of shadows. So I'm going to create a plain primitive to put on the ground here to catch some shadows. I'm going to make it 50 meters by 50 meters and just, uh, you know, s standard gray settings here. Right? And then I'm going to create a spotlight just with the standard settings. I'm going to view through the spotlight. Select the tree and aim at it and move the light up here towards the top. And we make sure that we get good amount of light all over the tree. And then I'm going to go to my default camera, take a look at it again, select the spotlight, go to parameters, and scroll down all the way here at the bottom or close to the bottom, you'll see that it has shadow type. And I'm going to change that to a deep shadow map. The ray trace software only shadows tend to be a little bit more accurate and you can get nice soft shadows with them but for time constraints I'm going to select deep shadow map. Leave the shadow softness at 0% and I'll render. Now you notice this will take much longer to render this scene but the realism will hopefully be worth it. And there you have a fairly realistic, highly detailed Christmas tree model that was made, textured, UV mapped, and rendered in less than 30 minutes. The goal of this tutorial has been to illustrate general practices which can be applied to things beyond making Christmas trees, and I hope you find them useful. Thanks for watching, and Merry Christmas. Oh, and remember, there is the finished product available at my website at ageofarmor.com slash 3D.